So our grand prize winner tonight, Jack Hammer or Cavitation, the final answer, producer Jaime Zacharias from Santiago, Chile. There has been active debate over the fundamental physics involved in phaco emulsification. Many believe that the forward displacement of the phaco tip directly disrupts the lens in an action known as jackhammer effect. Others propose that the lens disrupting power of phaco lies in energy released by collapsing bubbles created by acoustic cavitation. There are practical implications in the determination of the true mechanism involved in phaco emulsification. If cavitational energy is found irrelevant for phaco action, it would make sense to design phaco tips that exhibit reduced cavitation to avoid the harmful effects of cavitation such as free radical formation. If on the other hand cavitation is the main basis, then other design approaches would be required. To answer this controversy we engaged in an exciting adventure. Our first challenge was to inequivocally document the existence of cavitation. A series of experiments were conducted using a combination of complex light sources, recording methods and custom-made state-of-the-art electronics. This effort led to high-quality recordings of the cavitation phenomenon. We revealed that cavitation mainly occurs in close proximity to the tip of the phaco needle. Also, that it only appears at high ultrasonic powers of 50% or more. We found that cavitation not only occurs at the tip of the phaco needle, but also along the shaft and in proximity to the hub at the proximal portion. Having clearly documented the cavitation activity typical of phaco probes, our next challenge was to determine the relationship between cavitation and phaco emulsification. Our idea was to find a controllable way to inhibit cavitation and then determine the effectiveness of phaco under suppressed cavitation conditions. It was stimulating to discover during our research the existence of deep sea volcanic structures known as hydrothermal vents. Water from these vents emerges at temperatures above 700 degrees Celsius, high enough to melt lead, but incredibly the water does not boil as it would do at the surface of the sea. The huge pressures present at these deep sea locations suppress any possibility of bubble formation or boiling. Inspired in these deep sea hydrothermal vents that expel water at 700 degrees without boiling, we realized that we could eventually suppress ultrasonic cavitation emulating the pressure conditions present at the deep sea. In the same way Alvin, the deep sea explorer, was built, we built a hyperbaric system to contain the complete fluidic system of a phaco console, including the actual peristaltic pump, the handpiece and the phaco tip. Although complicated, enclosing the complete fluidic system was necessary to maintain standard operating conditions such as irrigation, aspiration and vacuum during the deep sea pressure experiments. Having clearly identified cavitation, the cavitation phenomenon was now monitored at different pressure levels. Also, the hissing noise characteristic of phaco handpiece operation, supposedly related to cavitation, was recorded at different pressure levels and spectrum analyzed. To our fascination, we could observe that increasing pressure above atmospheric significantly inhibit cavitation activity. When pressure raised 2 bar above atmospheric pressure, all cavitation at the distal portion of the phaco tip was suppressed. 
Cavitation patterns at the phaco tip, as well as the response to pressure, could differ when the tip of the phaco probe is in the proximity of a solid body. For this reason, we moved one further step and tested cavitation suppression by pressure with the phaco tip in close proximity to a silicone rubber phantom. As expected, all evidences of acoustic cavitation were cancelled by pressure even in areas where the phaco tip was almost embedded into the solid body. Several tests were conducted up to 5 bar above sea level pressure and in this condition not a single bubble could be noted, probably because of dissolution of all gases into the liquid. Decreasing pressure, similarly to going back to the surface of the sea, reversed the cavitation suppression and cavitation reappeared in its full expression back at sea level pressure. Spectrum analysis of the noise recordings of the operating handpiece showed interesting findings. The typical homogeneous noise heard at ambient pressure was replaced by a series of harmonics when cavitation was fully cancelled. This is a complementary demonstration that cavitation is seriously altered under hyperbaric conditions. Having first documented cavitation and second totally suppressed it under hyperbaric conditions, our next and final step was to test the efficacy of FACO with cavitation fully inhibited. For this purpose, we performed a series of experiments with real cataract fragments. We developed a technique to feed lens fragments to the FACO probe at both the ambient conditions and hyperbaric conditions in a controlled manner. Part of these experiments considered punching a cataract fragment with a lightweight tube to obtain a cylinder of tissue that was then placed inside the test chamber in direct contact with the FACO tip to remain on axis. Pulses of ultrasound were delivered alternating between normal and hyperbaric conditions, allowing us to carefully compare the cutting action with cavitation to the cutting action without cavitation on the same material. Cavitation did not contribute to any increase in cutting efficiency. We have demonstrated that cavitation is present at the tip of phaco probes only when ultrasonic power is high enough, typically above 50% power. Inspired in submarine hydrothermal vents, we have used hyperbaric conditions to totally cancel cavitation at the tip of the phaco probe, both when freely exposed to water and also in close proximity to solid bodies similar to cataract fragments. Finally, we have determined that with acoustic cavitation totally suppressed, the phaco emulsification action is unaltered. The fact that phaco occurs when no cavitation is present provides strong evidence that cavitation plays no role in phaco emulsification leaving jackhammer effect as the only mechanism responsible for the lens disrupting power of FACO. With this in mind, technology should be focused on maximizing the jackhammer effect and reducing the cavitation effect which does not assist in lens emulsification and can potentially have a negative impact. In this direction, the recent introduction of torsional FACO produces effective lens disruption with almost no cavitation compared to axial phaco emulsification.